うちは言える。なあなあ、一緒に探検に行けん We can finally retire that picture because we finally have an answer. You remember you well? Well, where the fuck is you all fat? UL is home. She is here. She is in a freaking giant box. I am so excited. I'm shaking. She is real. It's UL. She is finally, finally home. And I mean, look at this box. Look at this box. There is just one figure in here. It's UL. She, it, the box is 18 inches wide. Foot and a half deep. And heck, 16 inches tall. I mean, this is a huge, huge, giant box. It was expensive. It was a long wait to get her, but UL is finally, finally here. It's been like since Wonder Festival summer of 2015 that I've wanted this. She is here. I could drone on and on and on about the wait for UL and the struggle. I even tried making intros that I didn't like, but yeah. We'll, we'll gloss over that and just say it's been four years and she's finally here. It's been 401 days since I've ordered this figure and she's finally here. Enough of this. Let's get her open. <laughs> I can't wait any longer. So, yeah.、Uh, I do want to say please temper your expectations. Please expect disappointment because there's no way this figure can live up to the hype that we've built up for her. There's no way this video will live up to the hype you've built for her. She's going to be great, but temper your expectations. So. Yeah, we ordered her from Big in Japan, so it's not an Amiyami box. That's just,、uh, yeah. Paper. More paper and a box, a figure box. Let's get her out. Oh my god, it's real. It's real. It's UL. Even her packing box is huge.、Uh, maybe push this back a little bit, get her all in frame. Wow. And she's wrapped very securely in blister wrap or bubble wrap. So let's get that open. She's also wrapped in some tissue paper. So, yeah, just a little history. Well, maybe not a little history, but whatever.、Uh, so I first saw UL at Wonder Festival 2015 summer. And. I lo really loved her. I decided I would buy the gray prototype if that was ever offered. That's how much her sculpt had impressed me. Oh, oh yes. Oh, she's real. And,、um, you know, 2015, we all expected her to be out within a year, year and a half. And then, you know, fat went into complete radio silence.、Uh, I need to take some pictures of the box before I even open it. So, excuse me for a second. There's the front of her box. There is the side of her box. There is the back of her box. The other side of her box.、Uh, the top of her box. And. She's got a plain boring bottom. So, sorry about that. I had to take a picture with my other phone before I even open her. It's just so, so exciting. And I'm looking side games. I don't really even see a mention of Fat Company anywhere on here. I mean, maybe in the Japanese text, but yeah. Wow.、Um, but yeah,、uh, you all, like I said, Since Wonder Festival 2015 summer,、uh, she got painted in the winter 2016 Wonder Festival. And then basically, after August 9th of 2016, Fat Company went into complete radio silence on UL. 
and there had been no mention of her ever since until magically one day she went up for order but she's here uh, I had all these notes I had all these plans but it's just it's all out the window I've okay calm down this is UL the Chitose no Saga Susha version or thousand year seeker uh, she is from Grand Blue Fantasy, uh, which is owned by uh, Psy Games. And honestly, I think Psy Games is the reason for the delay and everything, not necessarily Fat. There is one mention of Fat, which is the painter. Uh, but yeah, she is a 1-7 scale figure. She was a Lawson in-store exclusive sale, which meant... You had to actually go into a brick and mortar store in Japan to order her. Luckily, there's some companies that kind of skirt around things in Japan, like namely Big in Japan, that let me order her online. Uh, she was freaking, freaking expensive, but these days, not there's figures more expensive than her. Uh, I paid for UL. Uh, where is it? $276.92. Almost $300. Uh, it, that was 29,990 yen plus 5,900 yen in shipping. So she was expensive. I ordered her August 2nd of 2018 and she just now got here July 9 or July 7th of 2019. It's been 401 days. So Aside from UL looking amazing and everything, I don't know anything about her. Never played the game. I watched the anime. She showed up for about two scenes, said a couple lines, and they didn't even say her name. So, aside from the weight and everything, UL is a very special figure for me. Um, I don't know how to say this, but you don't know this. Last year, in end of July, some bad things was going on in my life. And honestly, I did quit figure collecting. Because of everything that was going on, figure collecting was just last priority. But then UL popped up. And I had been waiting so long for her. Waiting and waiting and waiting. And she popped up. And she was expensive. UL got me, allowed me to accept that I could, you know, continue figure collecting. I could do something that made me happy. So she is a very special figure in my life. So I'm so happy to finally, finally have her. Uh, I think she released, she was listed as uh, August 31st of 2019. I don't know exact dates or whatever, but uh, Big in Japan finally shipped her out on... July or September 3rd of 2019 so and then customs delayed things and everything so it's just been a pain uh, but anyways I'm rambling enough rambling it's been eight and a half minutes let's get her out we've waited long enough <laughs> so we've got a seal up on top we've got a seal on the side and we've got a seal on the other side she has been unsealed she is open. Let's get her out. Oh, it's real. It's real. We've got some instructions. Uh, the inside of the box on the bottom, it's blue. It's got the Grand Blue Fantasy logo. It's got like a sky theme, sky cities and everything. Put that off to the side. Uh, we've got her instructions of how to assemble her. So you got Sword's separate, you got her tail is separate, you got a couple supports, and you got a little magical fox effects. There, you put her tail into her butt, and her sword's into her hand. And on the other side, then you put all the pieces onto the base, and you have some supports. So yay. There is UL in her blister packaging. So yeah. Spin her around. There she is on the side. There's a second blister packaging holding the magical effects. And there's the other side. 
and we're back to the front. Um, I do want to look closer at her face right now. So one of the biggest points of contention amongst a lot of people when, you know, in the three or four years of waiting for the order to go up was her mouth. And I think it looks pretty good so far. Uh, she has fangs, and a lot of people were really not the biggest fans of her fangs. Okay, so this wasn't even taped in. Uh, let's go ahead and put her off to the side, and we shall open up this blister first. Uh, doesn't appear to be taped. But yeah, anyways, her mouth. Uh, it had She has fangs, and a lot of people said that the fangs really look bad, like spittle and everything. But I think it looks good. So surprisingly, these are not in uh, plastic, like a plastic baggie, but you got like the little Foxfire coming off and off the bottom and you got the nice blue wave, curve, whatever it is. Um, I did see a couple people, bastards, got her before me and posted a picture or two on MFC and there were like bubbles inside of the plastic. So I can already see in this one, there is a bubble inside of the plastic, but I can live with it. It's not horrible or anything. Uh, we got a little bit more fox fire, and we got the magical fox. And I'm just going to call it a fox. I don't know what it really is. I think she's a part of the Erne race, which is basically big fluffy tail, uh, lots of hair, big giant ears, and very little clothing. So, uh, let, let's get her open. So, again, it doesn't appear to be any tape. Okay, there's the blister open. <laughs> and let's start with the base. I am a little bit disappointed that it is basically a plain black base. Uh, it does have the Grand Blue Fantasy logo etched onto it and sculpted a little bit. Uh, you got a couple metal pegs for the Foxfire things, and you got a metal peg going into her foot. You got little toe holes and everything. I was hoping that the base would be maybe a scenic base, but it's not. It's just a plain black circle. And there is a little crud on it. Let's see if I can wipe that off with my shirt real quick. Eh, that crud is pretty much there. I may try some Windex or something, you know, cle actual cleaner later, but it is what it is. So we'll put that off to the side. And next, we will pull out her swords. There are two of them. And they're basically uh, scimitars, I think is the term for these. So you got a long blade, it's curved at the end and thicker, it's got like stabby points. Uh, it's wrapped around the handle very nicely, quite detailed. And it's got little rings for the pommels. Uh, paint wise, looks pretty good, nice silverish color, you got a little bit of shading and everything in there. So yay, there's the swords. Here is one little tail support. And there is another little tail support. And if we come over here, you can see they are slightly different sizes. So one's for like the bulk of her tail and one's for the tip of her tail. Okay, next, we pull off some plastic and we pull out the fluff. This is like one of the main reasons people fell in love with her. This is heavy. This is quite heavy, but we have her tail. Look, it's massive. I can see why they need all the supports. Look at all the detail in the sculpt. So much fluff, so many individual hairs. So much shading is done. Um, yeah. Little little paint chip there, but it's gonna not gonna be where you can see it. 
Uh, it's like a dark bluish color and it goes to a gray tip. And there's just so much shading, so much sculpting done on this. This is why so many people fell in love, just all the detail. Uh, now that I have it in my hands, like we can see, you can't just mold this all in one giant piece. So there are a bunch of seam lines where different pieces are glued on. But from main viewing angles, you're not going to see those. So that is good. And yeah, that is heavy. So we'll set that off to the side. And then we have UL herself. Oh, yes. she's real. Come on out. So she has a mass of hair and it was kind of sticking inside the blister. So if you do get her, be very cautious of that because there is a lot of very fragile strands of hair back here. <laughs> Got more plastic wrapped around her. Just being so careful. <laughs> Don't want to break anything. Okay, it's kind of hooked on her back and everything. So they actually poked a hole in the plastic to shove her hair through. <laughs> wow. Uh... There's some plastic on her ribbon and on her hand, on her other ribbon, her other hand. There is a plastic s support, like solid plastic, between her hair and her butt. And then you've got another plastic bag going around her foot. I'm going to gently set her down and clean up all this plastic. Let's get a good look at her. Wow. You know what I said about being disappointed? Uh, you can forget that. <laughs> because, wow. Yep. 10 out of 10, no doubt. I mean, look at all the detail. Look at all these strands of hair just flying everywhere. Look at her belly. Lots of shading. You can see all the muscle. She is a very, very muscular girl. Um, she's got nice breasts. They do have good separation. They are not welded together. Uh, look at her back. Lots of detail there. Lots of shading. You get all the folds from her pose. You know, she is really arching her back back. Uh, you got a, unfortunately, a giant hole for her tail, but it's very understandable. Uh, looking at her crotch area, very detailed down there. Uh, the underwear, very, very tight. Lots of creases and folds and everything you can see, you know, camel toe and everything. But, I mean, we talked about how muscular her she was. Look at those tendons in there. Look at those ass cheeks. Oh, amazing. Very nice little foot. And you got some armor. And you got fur going up her shin on both feet. Another very nice looking foot. Uh, toes have a little bit of paint on them, a little bit of sh clear, clear coat. There are the peg holes for her. And uh, looking at her chest area, you can see that the uh, Breasts were like a separate piece from the torso, so there is a little seam line there. But you're not going to notice it. It's natural because there's typically a little fold there from breasts. Uh, she has big, giant ears. And in the prototypes, there was always a gap where the ear met the hair, met the head. They have fixed that in this final product. Uh, she has big, giant bells, so two of them on each side. And you got the, like, talismans and the ribbon and everything. And, I mean, look at her face. She's got one little fang in the final product. Nice uh, closed mouth smile. Kind of, you know, devilish looking. Her bottom lip is protruding a little bit and it's painted nicely. Uh, she is wearing a nice little necklace. Uh, you can see her collarbone and necklines and everything. 
uh, her hands. Again, they have the fur coming off of them, and she is making the little fox symbols with both of them. And she is has her hands ready to accept the swords to hold them. And elbow. You can see all the elbows. And I really like, I noticed looking at pictures today how they did this. Like her shoulder, just with the pose that she is, it's like protruding a little bit, and you can see it. And that is a wonderful detail. It's very realistic. It may look a little bit off if you're not used to seeing that, but that's very, very nice. And as I said before, just look at all of that hair. So yeah, worth the price. The weight, not so much. <laughs> the weight was so, so horrible. Anyways, enough of that. Let's get her together. So, we're going to start with her tail. Again, very heavy. You definitely need to use the supports with her. And that goes into her butthole. Well, the hole on her butt. It is keyed, so it will only go in one way. Uh, maybe if I turn around the other side. Oh, by the way, she's got little hip armor and shapes of fox masks. But yeah, let's maybe spin her around this side. A little bit better angle to see of getting the tail in. Come on. Come on. Is a very tight fit. I think I've got it in all the way now. And that just made her so much heavier. But it really, really completes her. Um, so according to the instructions, the next thing is the swords. So it shows it from the back. Okay. First one coming in. No. Shows it from this angle. So first one goes in this hand. And actually... Okay, let me set her down. I didn't see this the first time. But the handles come off. So that'll make it a lot easier to put them into her hand. So this goes into her hand. I'm just checking. Okay. Uh, it is keyed. So, like, one side sticks out. So make sure you have everything lined up properly. So, looking at the picture, it kind of goes like this. Okay, so this side goes in like this, and then this is supposed to go, you know what, this is going to be easier if she's on her base first. So let's go ahead and just shove that metal peg into her foot and line it up so that the other plastic peg goes into her foot as well. Uh, we'll put some supports for the tail back here. Okay, that support does absolutely nothing. So, but anyways, now that we've got her on the base, let's try to get this sword into her hand properly. It's kind of a tight fit. But you can do it uh, right there. It's like resting against her boa or whatever that would be called. But there's that one. So next we will put in the other sword. So again, comes apart at the handle. It's keyed so it only goes in the one way. And so it'll go up her hand. Does it go through her hair? No, there's this one strand of hair that's kind of in the way, so we'll gently push that back. And then put the sword in. And there's that. I do just want to look at pictures real quick, make sure it's kind of right. Okay, it goes over her boa, over her boa. 
it's supposed to be this one is supposed to be like in the back so yeah it looks like maybe her hands aren't on properly or how they had it in the picture because it doesn't quite line up properly but it's good enough because this sword is supposed to be behind this sword and it's not really working that way but I can live with that <laughs> so now we can uh, pick her up put her back a little bit put this instructions over and bring her forward and let's get the foxfire effects on so this one goes over here Maybe. Hmm. Okay, let's try taking her off again. So, uh, if you do get her, prepare for a pain in the butt getting her assembled. There we go. Take that off. Set her down gently. And let's try to get these things on now. There we go. There's that one. And then this one over here. It was difficult to get things lined up with her on, so that's probably... That's why I took her off. There we go. Okay, so her Foxfire magical effects are on. Let's just see if we can get her back on now. So again, you like, uh, it's hard to show you, but you get the metal peg lined up with her foot and into the hole, and then you tilt her forward so that this little plastic peg right here goes into the front hole on her foot and you just slide her like down and forward. Maybe. Come on. Come on. It's hard to do because she is so heavy. Wow. Okay. She's on. And you, like I said, you definitely want to use the support. As soon as I released, she did lean back a little bit. So we'll just stick that under and lift her up just a hair. And then this other one is supposed to be for the like tip of her tail. But like I said, right now, maybe in the future, it'll uh, start sagging. But for right now, this one is useless. Uh, unless... No... I was thinking maybe the short one is going to be for the back and this one for the front. But yeah, looking at the instructions, tall one in the back, short one on the front. So whatever. Honestly, it's just wow. <laughs> And honestly, I think the one support is going to be all that you need. Uh, I'll just stick this one back here for in case the tail does start sagging. But, wow. So, sorry about the whole suckiness of this unboxing. I'm just excited. It's UL it, having to concentrate. It's real. She's actually here. <laughs> but, let's do a nice little spin around of her finally. Everything's all assembled. And yeah, we can look at UL again. It's real. She's here. <laughs> De definitely, in my opinion, worth the money. Uh, wow. Now, she's not for everyone, but not everyone is a good person. 
I am very impressed with her. I am very happy with her. Sure, some of the assembly is difficult and things may not line up exactly perfectly with the stands, but yeah, she is definitely worth the money. And the wait was horrible, but she is finally here. So to be prepared, uh, at the widest point, she is about 13 and a half, maybe 14 inches wide. Uh, tall, tall wise, uh, it looks like 11 and a half inches at the tip of her sword. So she is not a small figure. <laughs> she is definitely a centerpiece for a collection. Um, so while I was waiting for UL, I did buy the little chibi UL. <laughs> yeah, that kind of shows you the massive difference in, difference in size. Uh, something else people may be, uh, familiar with. I do have a Coke can. So, just to give you an idea of the size she's going to take up. So we'll put that back off to the side. And, you know, UL, one of her key points is fluff. And tail fluff. So we can't talk about tail fluff without a casual tomamo. So she is also a 1 7 scale figure. Um, Tamamo's head does seem a little bit larger than UL's. But honestly, size-wise, everything else is pretty much the same. You know, legs are about the same length, torso, chest. So yeah, but if we spin around to the back, we can start comparing the fluff. So we'll move her over on this side and Tamamo over here. And I'll leave it up to you. Which fluff is best fluff? Uh, UL obviously has a lot more. Her tail is much more giant. But they both have a lot of sculpting details. I would have to give the edge to UL again in that uh, category. And definitely in shading, the edge is UL. But it's up to you which fluff you like best. But yeah. She's real. She's here. I am so happy. Oh my god. Where the fuck you use UL? UL is home. We can retire that image. Yeah, it's UL. So I'm going to go ahead and close this video off and just marvel at her. Uh, this is UL, the Chitose no Sagasusha version, the Thousand Year Seeker. She is from Grand Blue Fantasy. Uh, she's been listed everywhere as being manufactured by Fat Company, but the only mention of Fat on the box is in the Painter by Saigame, so they're kind of the ones that handled her. Uh, she is a 1 7 scale figure. She released, I'm guessing, August 31st of 2019, after many years of waiting. Uh, I ordered her 401 days ago on August 2nd of 2018. UL is not cheap. I paid $276.92 for her, or 29,990 yen, plus 5,900 yen for shipping. So it was real close Right around $300 I paid for this figure. I've been waiting forever. She's finally home. Woohoo. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm out. Bye bye. And I almost forgot, just in case you're wondering, she does fit in the detail. She takes up pretty much the whole thing, so definitely a centerpiece. Hope you all enjoyed. For real this time. I'm out. Bye-bye. <laughs>